We're kicking off in style. It'll be one of the closest, one of the most exciting. It is Whelan Mazda MX-5. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to beautiful Sebring, Florida, the home of endurance racing in the US, the original home of Formula One, as we're ready to go for our first of two races this weekend for the Whelan Mazda MX-5 Cup. The weather is perfect, really playing along. And in case you don't know where this historic track is, <laughs> we're pretty much right in the centre of Florida, in the Central Highlands region. We've got three and three quarter miles. We don't talk about turn numbers here. They have names, they reflect the history, like Le Mans Curve, Jean de Bian Ben, Bishop, Ben, uh, Ullman Strait, Gurney. They are all absolute titans of the sport. And if this concrete could talk shit, Adam, what a story it would tell. What do you mean, if it could talk? It does, John. It rumbles very, very slightly under your feet as cars go blasting down the front straight into turn one. For some of these cars, it's barely even a lift. And depending on where you are in the Mazda pack, it might not be a lift. You might be using the bump drafting coming down the front straight as the cars finally get rolling out of the pit lane. Oh, I've got goosebumps. I'm so excited for this. We've already had two races on the 2024 season as the drivers are heading towards a $250,000 first prize. That's not the whole prize, but over $1.2 million up for grabs in what? Real cash money. Real cash money, including, of course, the payout for each of the top 10 in every one of the races, as well as the top 10 in the championship and the scholarship payouts as well. Exactly. If you win today's race, you're going to walk away with $6,000. That'll buy your crew a nice dinner. So hopefully you're not doing <laughs> any damage to the car. You have to make it up to them. But we look at what Mazda does for people across the championship. $110,000 went the way of Weston Workman in the end of 2023 for winning that scholarship. But they gave $80,000 to Nathan Nicholson for second. And $80,000 to Sally Mott for being the best place woman. This championship is filled with people who have won the scholarship in the past, John. They've already made a name for themselves and they stay here because this is the destination championship that people aim for. People like racing here, but they race elsewhere. Connor Zilich is driving an LMP2 car in the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring this weekend. Where did he learn to race? Right here still wants to race here as well. Yeah, he does. He comes back every opportunity he gets because you can win money. And that's the big incentive. Not only being in the top 10 of the championship, which he accomplished last year by dint of winning four races, even though he missed four races in the championship, he still was in the top 10 and he still walked away with a check at the end of the year from Mazda. He's on a scholarship program with General Motors. He's racing in Trans Am. He's racing in the NASCAR series as well in some of the national series there, but he's still here and he's on pole position alongside him is Tyler Gonzalez. He's done racing elsewhere, including in other IMSA championships as well. Then you've got Celine Roland and Anthony McIntosh as well. At sea above, the, all of these drivers, they, they are moving on with their career, but still want to keep one foot in the wheel and Mazda MX-5 Cup. Yeah, and just before we get too far down the road, hi, Dale Jr. I know you've given Connor Zilich a chance. I know you're a big fan of this series. So let's see how your boy does later on. Oh, yeah, a apparently Connor Zilich getting a little bit of flack on the socials because Dale Jr. has given him an opportunity and nobody actually went back and looked at his record. Well, they couldn't, he, he can't hear the complaining over the ticking of his Rolex from January. So that is a nice That's benefit a to, uh, well to his point. But yes, you're right. We've got Jared Thomas, who became the first ever repeat champion in this series. The, the first person to win it twice, and he did it back to back, which is impressive. But we've also got guys like Celine Roland, who have gone on with massive success in this championship. Looking bigger picture, you come back here. Three quarters of an hour, full fat racing. Uh, this is real racing. The cars look stock, they are anything but the engine is, that's sealed. Nobody, no tomfoolery, no shenanigans. That's sealed by Mazda Motorsport, but the car is completely transformed from a street stock MX-5 that comes in on the boat from Japan. It goes up to the Brothers Fliss, just up the coast uh, at Daytona. They strip it down to its component parts and add over 250 
race pieces to that car, including an FIA rule cage, a SADF sequential box, fire suppression system, new steering wheel, new instrumentation. It's all in there. This is a real racing car. And by the way, watch out in 24th position outside of row 12 for the Hendrix Motorsport. We're at Hendrix Field for Jesse Love, ARCA champion, one of many racers accomplished races from other championships who have formed an orderly line to come and race with us in Wheel and Mazda MX-5 Cup. Stand by. Sebring has provided us with some brilliantly close racing for Wheel and Mazda MX-5 Cup. The green flag's in the air. And now Paul Sitter, Connor Zilich and Tyler Gonzalez make a clean break in the front of the field. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five MX-5s across the road. Behind them is their turning. A slight lift and down one gear on the acceleration. There was a little bit of a touch at the front of the field there. I think as Gonzalez was very close to the back of the pool. So it's going to have a look down inside Tom Christensen. Curve turn three. Can't quite get that done. And at the moment, with a little bit of dust thrown up, I think we have cleared the whole field through the first three or four corners. <gasps> under the Corvette Bridge, bit of rally crossing going on there in about fifth or sixth position. I think that was Preston Pardis and Aaron Johnson who were side by side for a moment, but the leaders are pulling away. Wow, this could be really important if these two work together now. They could make a real break. Three cars ahead of the field. That was uh, Celine Rolland who got hung out to dry doing a bit of off-road driving going through turn three. That actually is going to hurt Connor Zelich because he and Connor are teammates. So now Celine Rolland well back within the grasp of the pack. That means that Connor needs to work with whoever's around him who just happens to be Tyler Gonzalez. But what a start from Nate Cicero already up into the third position. Started in fifth in the McCombie McAleer racing car. Uh, they've got 11 team many cars under <laughs> their awning at the moment. They're becoming a super team in this particular form of racing. And, of course, both of the team principals, McCumbie uh, and McAleer, yep. raced in this championship. They did, and uh, Chad McCumbie finding his first foray into sports car racing in this championship. But Stephen Mackler, a former series champion, of which we have many who still exist in the IMSA paddock. Tyler Gonzalez is driving like he needs to lead this race, and John, he does. Yeah, he needs some more points for the season. Extra points for Paul, extra points for most lap played. I get a feeling that Saito Motorsport driver in that number 57, the green and white car, should be white and green, really, shouldn't I? Because it's more <laughs> white. I think he's trying to get the message to Connor Zilich is, hey, guys, we've got a real opportunity here. Let's not hold each other up. I'm looking to be a little bit quicker. He's pulled out a third, a half of a car to the right-hand side. I don't think he was trying to overtake that down into turn 17. What he was trying to do is get a bit of clean air on the front of his Mazda. It is particularly warm at the moment. 81 Fahrenheit on the track, 82 in the air. That's 28 in the air and 27 track temperature in Celsius. Across the line for the first lap, it is a 45-minute timed race and down into turn one. No fight there from Zilic. Nope. Zilic, I think, realises that perhaps Tyler Gonzalez might be a bit quicker and Nate Cicero's going to make it a triple at the front of the field. Now, they work together now. They're going to pull away because side by side behind them, Anthony McIntosh and Preston Pardis and Jared Thomas all scrapping <laughs> among themselves. And if you're side by side, you're not as efficient as Linus Stern, even though there's not a lot of long... There's only one long straight here. It's not like Daytona. These cars still draft because they're absolutely flat out as they're going through a lot of this. Uh, we've got two wide and many deep behind. But look at the gap the leaders are putting in. It was just on three and a half seconds at the line. And I reckon it's getting up for four seconds now as they're pulling away. We don't normally see this year. No. These top three are sensible here. They can split the podium between them. Well, and not only do we not normally see this, but looking at who's leading the second group, it was Anthony McIntosh. Now it's Preston Pardis, but Jared Thomas is working very hard. Two-time champion, Jared Thomas, knows how to win races, knows how to get to the front, knows how to tell people, stop fighting. We need to work together yeah. to yeah. get back to them. <laughs> I wish you could see Shea in the Global Broadcast Centre because she's doing all of the hand move. I thought that was she was doing YMCA or Agadoo there for a moment. but I'm, I'm bringing a plane in. Yeah, right at an airport. Something so. like that. You just, yeah. you just need the table tennis bat. Oh, big that is wide a, moment for Gresham Wagner. And that will slow him down. But this top three now have to be sensible. They really do. You talked about Gresham Wagner and, uh, and Jared Thomas. Jared Thomas, our only, only 
twice champion, and he did it in consecutive years. He's looking for the third in a row, the hat trick of championships. And to do that with the kind of competition, it is so deep. It's always been competitive at the front of this championship, but we have, I reckon we've got a dozen or 15 cars that could easily be on the podium each weekend as the top three head to 17. Yeah, there's 30 cars in the field, there's 30 cars that could take a podium Well, that, that, I mean, <laughs> that is literally true, yeah. but, uh, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to be sensible about that. I, I would say there's probably 15 that could win, but there's 30 that could end up on the podium yeah. because these races, the way that they finish, and if you need a proof of how these races finish, go back to 2021 when we had three wide across the checkered flag and they were separated by three thousandths of a second from first to third. Yeah, first to third. First to third. Yes, yes. Ex exactly right. I'll tell you why Tyler Gonzalez wanted to be in the lead. He wants those 10 bonus points and more so, he doesn't want Connor Zilich to get the 10 bonus points because Connor, not exactly sure, but he's not supposed to run a full season this yeah. year. So if somebody is going to be stealing points and then disappearing, that's even worse than if they're stealing points and racing against you. Yeah, I suppose that is true. That is true. Although he's taking them from other people. Yeah, he missed uh, the middle couple of races of the season, Connor, and still ended up in the top 10 and took the check home. Yep. When you did the presentations at the end of last year at Motul, at Petit Le Mans and at Michelin Raceway Road, Atlanta. Right, we've had five minutes. It doesn't settle down. It doesn't get any less bonkers all the way through. Second group led by Preston Pardus in the uh, blue fronted white number 51 for Rick Ware Racing. Great to see them back. In behind him, there's a little bit of damage on the front of Jared Thomas's car. That's from qualifying yesterday. Three of the JTR cars got together. It actually resulted in two of them moving to backup cars for the start of today's race. Peter Atwater and Nathan Nicholson. Let's see, where is Nathan after starting dead last in the 30th position? He's up to 21st. Nathan is going for that Rookie of the Year championship, so he needs to pass as many cars as he can. Should mention that Noah Harmon is the best of the rookies at the moment, sitting just outside the top 10 in 12th position and he's got Western Workman, the BSI Racing Scholarship recipient, about three seconds behind him. So there's a bit of work to do for Nathan Nicholson, who's been among or the fastest rookie all the way through the week to this part. It was turn 17, you don't have small accidents at turn 17, brought the red flag out on Wednesday afternoon and ended the session early. Not necessarily because anybody was hurt, they weren't, not necessarily because they couldn't clear the cars up, they could, but there was a lot of debris and a lot of rebuilding of the tyres bundles around there. Top three starting to have a bit of a scrap here. Looks like uh, Nate Cicero thinks it's his turn to go into second place through turn 17. He's up the inside of the Mazda Lakeland supported red and white car in second. That's Connor Zillich. This is not what these guys need to do. There's 37 minutes to go. They can do this when you get to the last lap. But look, side by side, those two cars for one corner, and Tyler Gonzalez has pulled out nearly a half a second. That's what happens. That's how much the draft means here around this circuit. Open top cars, full FIA rule cage. It's in the wind. It punches a huge hole in the air. So one, one car on its own, OK. Two cars side by side, not good. Three cars, line astern, very good indeed. Yes. No bueno if you're going to be fighting side by side. At least there's 37 minutes to go, and they can work their way back up to Tyler Gonzalez, and already they've begun that. As Correct. There's a lot of side by side racing further back in the pack as well as people are scrapping for minor positions. Well, that gap between Nate Cicero in third and the pack went up above, uh, above four seconds. It's just hovering around for the moment. Ooh. Oh, and the Nate Pachura, is that Pachura, Alex that, Pachura? That was up? Alex Pachura getting yeah. stuffed into the tires quite hard. It's a turn three in the 33 car. Now, in between three and four, there was a little touch oh. there. Credit He's... to Mazda and the cars that they built. Wow. He went off at a great rate of speed, and that, that beautiful number 33 shows no signs of damage. He's going to be absolutely fired up, though, because he's well off the back of the field. Uh, at turn three and four. Just keep an eye on that gap between the 83 of Cicero, the blue car, and the leader of the second group, which is from fourth down to, um, actually, to 29th now. <laughs> it, it is everybody except that number 33 car. In fact, actually, where did the 33 come back on? 
of Alex Petura. He's very quick. He's feisty, likes to get his elbows out. I'm just describing MX5 drivers generally here, of yeah, course. Yeah, Alex Bashura, who's been in the series on and off since 2014. Uh, he's an oral specialist. We called him an oral surgeon. He's got a little bit more detail than that to his work. But apparently he speaks Russian and Arabic. And he owns a 1992 Mazda Miata road car. Oh, nice. That's a good man. So that would be, that would be an NC then, wouldn't it? No, no, NB. NB. Yeah. Very good. Another lap led for Tyler Gonzalez. He's got three, Zilich has one, and you might think I'm going crazy keeping track of that already, but nope, by the end of the race, that's 10 points. 10 points already went to Zilich for taking the pole position, and right now, fastest lap belongs to, that looks like Zilich. Uh, no, I think it is Jeremy Fletcher, believe it or not, down oh. in ninth position. Championship co-leader. Mm. Stealing more points where it matters. And again, the scrap is going on in that second group. It's hovering around that four seconds, gone over four seconds at the last intermediate, 4.1 seconds between Pardus and now Thomas having a scrap. Jared Thomas in the Soul Red Crystal Mazda. It is a fact that some 80% of Mazda street cars are ordered in that color. And whenever I say that, she says, only 80%? Is why there would, another colour? Why would you buy another colour? <laughs> Yellow roll cage on the double champions car. Jared Thomas then has moved to the front of that chasing pack. I wonder if this is the double champion here just saying, right, I, I need to get the front here because we need to sort this out. Stop this fighting and let's work together. Otherwise, we're, we're scrapping for fourth position at this point. If they, I know there's 34 minutes to go, nearly, but if they don't get their act together, they're fighting for the scraps. There is debris on track at turn one. It's been called in by the corner workers, but we've also been told it's okay to continue. They've said it's safe. There's damage to the tire wall, where it's slightly moved out of place, and then the mirror cover as well. We should be able to stay green. Yeah, now let's see who's lost a mirror cover. Uh, in fact, I can tell you who it is. Yellow, it's Preston Pardis. It's Preston Pardis. I was going to say, if it's yellow, yeah. I think we can narrow that down pretty quickly. It's either Celine Rolland or Preston Pardis, and it is Preston indeed. This time, running solo. Rick Ware Racing had two cars at Daytona, yeah. just the one for this race. But still, that lead trio have broken away from the pack. And it's going to be another lap led, I believe, by Tyler Gonzalez. Don't be fooled by Conor Zilic in the red and white car pulling out again. I think he's just getting a bit of air into the radiators. These cars can run very close and draft very closely. We saw that at Daytona, but even at Daytona, and maybe particularly at Daytona on the high banks, when you're flat out for so much of that lap, you'd see people go a quarter or a half a car wide. Zilic pulls out, has a look, pulls back in again. Nate Cicero with a watching brief, and all of a sudden, Nate Cicero just goes back to Mazda MX-5 lengths there. Michelin tyres on all of these cars this year. Previously supplied by the sister company, of course, but Michelin always had the wet weather tyres. Can't remember the last time we used wet weather tyres, can you? No, and it won't be tomorrow either. No rain in the forecast, thankfully. <laughs> she said that very, uh, very confidently. Anthony McIntosh in the green and orange car. That's the colours of the 1991 Le Mans winner. Uh, those of you who have long memories will remember that rotary, the triple rotor 787B, uh, running around in that in that colours of a, a clothing company. It was actually at that time who were the primary sponsor, and there was at least in the UK. I'm not sure about anywhere else, and I'll have to ask someone who's who knows more than me about this. But there was a special edition road car for a, a, about three or four months after that Le Mans win in the UK that came from Mazda in those colours and painted, huh. painted in those colours back in 1991-92. Not a, a wrap, um, the uh, renowned colours. And uh, that is a very highly sought after street car because they were in very small numbers. There's one on the Mazda Heritage fleet in the UK. Huh. Mazda running all of their heritage cars on sustainable fuels now as well, which is certainly been proven in racing. I would ask my brother Damon, but that was way before he worked for Mazda, 1991. 
the MX-5 has had such a brilliant history. Uh, the original NA with the little pop-up headlights designed by a pretty small team at Mazda who wanted to recreate the driving, the natural driving fun of mid-1960s and early 1960s British sports cars, except without the drama of unreliability that they were all so well known for. And out they came with the NA. Rumour has it that it was the engine note was even tuned to resemble that of a 60s car with the, the exhaust as Zilich goes to the front for a moment into turn four. I'm very surprised by Zilich and Cicero, for that matter's lack of effort through turn 17, because that's where you need to practice making the move for the final lap into there to try and get a run on the leader to then make the pass at the line. There's half an hour to go, Shay, and but, they are but you still... Practice. But look at the gap now. It's nearly six seconds back to Gresham Wagner. Five and a half seconds from Nate Cicero in third. And as soon as I saw that gap open up and the quality of drivers at the front, fair play to Nate Cicero, by the way, for jumping on that straight away. I've often talked about the similarity between Grand Tour cycling racers and Mazda. If you get a breakaway from the peloton in Grand Tour cycling races, it, the, the attitude of the peloton will very much depend on the quality of the riders who are up the road and whether they are championship contenders or race contenders, general classification uh, contenders as they would call them. This would have been a mistake. This is like letting the top riders get away this is like letting Pogaccia get away in, in cycling terms. And these guys now have to work together, led by uh, Gresham Wagner and Jared Thomas. Two former series champions. Who have come to the front and they are driving that peloton on as much as they can and trying to say, guys, stop fighting. We need to make up this five seconds, otherwise we're battling for fourth on down. You made fun of my hand motions, but I'm pretty sure yeah, that's yeah. what Gresham and Jared are both doing in their cars, going, stop, let's <laughs> just work together, calm down. Thankfully for Jared, at least he's got Aaron Johnson, a, a man with a very straight head on his shoulders, able hey. to follow along, and Weston Workman, the rookie, learning. Now that's smart from Workman to yeah. have seen the possibility as we, again, see a bit of side, but not really side by side. It's, again, Zilic is not trying there. He's just pulling out to get a bit of fresh air into the radiators at the oil coolers at the front of that MX-5. Still 28 minutes to go. I'm finding this fascinating. This is not a usual Mazda MX-5 race here in the Wheel of Mazda MX-5 Cup. But what we've now got... Now, since we've got Gresham Wagner, Jared Thomas and Aaron Johnson coming to the front, of that train of cars, it's broken <laughs> up as the leaders bouncing through turn 17, all four wheels off the ground. No, no wear on the Michelin rubber there. No, great tire preservation, Connor Zilich. <laughs> yeah, not much grip either, though, in pawing for the air. But I look what's happened, Shea. Yes. Look at what's happened to that chasing group. They are still five seconds and more yeah. behind these three. But what's happened is the pace has been put in to that second group. And what we're now seeing, I think we're going to see a three or a four car group starting to break away. Maybe down to Western Merkman. Jeremy Fletcher is on the back of that as well. And Celine Roland. But then there's a gap back to Jonathan Nerdoff in the number 55 in 10th position. That's grown to a second. And if Jonathan doesn't bridge that gap quickly, this five or six cars with that yellow and blue car at the back of the second group there, Celine and that's Roland. Celine Roland, they're going to disappear. Look at the gap beginning to break up, and that is solely because Wagner, Thomas in particular, and along with Aaron Johnson, they fought their way to the front and stopped the fighting that was going on, stopped the side-by-side, -side, two wide, five deep going on. That wasn't helping them. And that last lap around, Jeremy Fletcher reset the fastest lap, but his lap was nearly a second faster than what the leading trio were able to do. So the gap will close and they will grow close together once again. Turn 10, action area as always, a little bit of bump drafting. Oh, and massive a, save. Yeah, that was a big, big sideways moment for the blue and white car of Preston Pardus, is it? Yes, yep. it is, the 51. And he 
managed to avoid taking all the signage out as well, so our track services will be very happy. Now, here is a pass for the lead. There we go. But it, that wasn't contested. Nope. That was not at all contested by Tyler Gonzalez. Maybe he made a little mistake coming out of turn 16. We didn't see that, but he, he knew there was no point in trying to fight that number 72 Mazda Lakeland car coming down the inside. And he's immediately straight onto the back three quarter of Zilic. I, th I think in quote-unquote clear air, I think Tyler Gonzalez has got the quickest car here. Yep, I would agree with that. Sato Motorsports Group, just the one car this weekend. So we don't know if it's just this car, if it's the team, but we have to believe it's both. Running highly sophisticated dampers from Multimatic, the DSV damper system, with all kinds of adjustment on bump and rebound. Um, it's no surprise to hear that everybody runs on the stiffer end of that. There's 11 clicks, 11 different settings for bump and rebound. That's a lot of different uh, combinations. But it'll surprise you not at all to know that there's a sweet spot in the middle. Just like getting the shower temperature right. It might turn two to the left and two to the right, but there's two millimeters right in the middle where it's just perfect when yeah. you're having a shower in the morning. All right, Goldilocks. A spin yeah. for the number 32. That's uh, Christian Hoodenland. Goes around and manages to get a point back in the right direction. Turn four, I think, as he rejoins underneath the Corvette drive over bridge. While things are mildly calm for a second, if you are here at the track today and you would like to meet the stars that you are seeing on TV and get a very, very cool poster, 4.30 at the Mazda Series Transporter. Go meet them, get the poster. Which is at the turn 16 end of the paddock, right up at the top end. And it's a very cool limited edition poster that that uh, features Celine. Is that Celine Rolland yeah. on the front of the field. But he wishes he was there at the moment, down in ninth position, seven seconds off the lead. And this leading trio, I tell you, not, this is not at all a typical Wheel and Master MX-5 Cup race in all the years that we have called these races together, Shay. Uh, I think I've seen maybe two or three that have been like this, where people have been able to break away. But they understood what was the potential, and here comes Gonzalez. He's going to go back the front again, uncontested, from Conor Zilic in second. I, I think certainly not even five I've seen, so not even the fingers on one hand. They saw the opportunity, settled down, and broke the tour immediately. Nate Cicero was the man in no man's land, got across. I don't think he's quite got the pace of the two cars ahead, so he's desperately trying to hold on. Across the line, Gresham Wagner, Jared Thomas, Aaron Johnson, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And the gap has come down be below five seconds for the first time in three or four laps. There it so is. So they are now starting to make a difference. But look at the difference. I said it was fourth down to 29th. Now there's only five, six cars in that trail. We've got Celine Roland as the last car in the second grouping, and he just set the fastest lap of the race, as a matter of fact. Jeremy Fletcher in front of him, Weston Workman, then Aaron Johnson, Jared Thomas, and leading them is Gresham Wagner. So that is a very strong second group, but they once again took nearly a second out of the leading trio that round. Weston Workman in that second group is the best of the rookies. Uh, Julian DaCosta has got ahead of Noah Harmon in 11th place. So BSI ahead of Spark Performance, 78 from 99. That's second and third in the rookies. And Nathan Nicholson in fourth uh, position in the rookies in 13th spot. Huh. After starting dead last Drive in the, the field. Driver of the deer there already. That's outstanding for a rookie. Can I just remind you, for a rookie, he's driven up through more than half of the field there very impressive and that's why Mazda gave him the second place in the scholarship shootout because they saw potential and once again it's Mazda putting money where their mouth is they they see potential in these drivers and they fund them equally last lap around the chasing group of Wagner Thomas Johnson Workman all put in their fastest lap of the race Jeremy Fletcher the only one who didn't but he was very close to it by a couple of tenths, and Celine Roland put in the very quickest lap of the race, so has that 10 points as it stands right now. Yeah, but Aaron Johnson's gonna take that as soon as they cross the start finish line. He's gone purple in the first sector and personal best in the second. Purple means best of anybody at all. You can follow along the live timing as you're watching here on 
IMSA Radio and IMSA TV at Alcamel. Results.imsa.com. Yeah. Click the live timing button. Also get a really handy dancing ant screen if you want them as well for positions. So it'll show you everybody. Again, Nate Cicero's not getting out of turn 17 quite as smoothly, but he's good on the rest of the lap. That second, all the interest for me now is looking at the gap between the second, uh, the third car and the second group. So Gresham Wagner and Nate Cicero, and it's closing. It was nearly six seconds. It went to just under five last time around. It's four and a half now. This is fine margins, but this is what the this is what the experience at the front of that second group is doing. They're driving them on. Now, you've got to ask yourself the question, though, what is Gresham Wagner and Jared Thomas, what are they taking out of their tyres in order to do this? Three championships between those two guys, they know exactly what they're taking out of their tyres. Now, the next question will be, but I suspect it's probably 15 minutes away, when does the gentleman's agreement, when does the detente end at the front of the field side by side action again down at turn number seven as jeremy fletcher went up the inside of the purple car of western workman now that they've got to be careful here ahead of them as jeremy fletcher goes through there that's just broken up that six car train again as soon as you start the flat fight shit you risk losing the draft of the cars ahead and in fact jeremy fletcher is trying to bridge that gap now he thinks that it's best to be with those three experienced drivers ahead and you can't fault that logic. No, not at all. And Jeremy Fletcher is a man who's learning very quickly. This is only his second season in the championship and after great work in both of the first races at Daytona, finds himself tied for the championship lead with former series champion Gresham Wagner and now his teammate. So a lot has changed over the course of the season in that Jeremy Fletcher now has somebody to turn and look to and work with to learn from. Uh, um, how is your Mazda MX-5 Cup car parts inventory. That's at turn seven at the hairpin. And was there a little touch? Oh, no. Came off of Heather Hadley. I think that's the inner wheel arch liner yep. from the number 54 blue and white for Heather Hadley, running in 24th position for BSI Racing. Here's the pass for the lead again down into turn 17. Again, I would call that an uncontested pass. Now, that sounds ridiculous because it's for the lead, but these guys. And again, this sounds odd, but I don't think these guys are fighting each other. And for once, Nate Cicero gets a better run out of 17. And look, he pushes the 57 through to the lead before turn one. Now, the question was, was Tyler Gonzalez ahead at the line? No, no he wasn't. Zilich. So it was still Zilich. So maybe now we're starting to see some planning for later on. Gonzalez goes back to the lead for the first time in a while. It's... Uh, Nate Cicero in second, and Connor Zilich has dropped down to third. But Zilich would need to lead every lap, and including the final one, in order to take the 10 bonus points away from Tyler Gonzalez. I, by I this think point. that's gone. I think he knows that's gone. This is about the win. Yep. This is three cars battling for the three steps on the podium. And the question is, which order will they come across the line? We've almost seen dead heats here before. The smallest measurable margin was the gap between first and second, with one one thousandth of a second between first and second, three one thousandths of a second between first and third. Now, the, the, the slight worry here for the red car, number 72 of Connor Zilich, will be if Tyler Gonzalez can just break away from Nate Cicero. He is doing that at the moment. Cicero is okay towards the middle part of the lap, but he's not good out of turn 17. He was much better last time. So maybe the track and the car is coming to him. At the second group now, Gresham Wagner, Jared Thomas, Aaron Johnson, and Western Workman has got back ahead of Jeremy Fletcher, but in doing so, they've lost the toe of the next three. There's a full second between them. So the dark purple car is Western Workman, but there are now three cars battling for fourth position. And that is a true battle for fourth with all of a sudden, there was 20 odd cars battling for fourth. Then it went down to six. Now, for the moment at least, it's down to three cars battling for fourth and three cars then battling for seventh on down. 
Gresham Wagner, Jared Thomas, Aaron Johnson. Those are three race winners from last year. Those are three guys who know how to get it done. They're seeing the group ahead now being a steady gap in front of them of 4.4 seconds. They're all going to be thinking, how do we make that disappear? They, they are chipping away at it now. They took a second off in two laps. Uh, now they've taken another couple of tenths off that lap. And now there's another half a second. There Half a second. So those three now, freed of having to worry about the trio behind them, all winners. We've got champions in there as well. So Wagner, Jared Thomas, and Aaron Johnson, two JTR teammates, and a McCombie McAlea racing driver for the first time this year in Gresham Wagner. Gresham talking to me on in the early part of the week in an interview that went out on Midweek Motorsport on Wednesday saying he wasn't sure whether he would be racing at all this year. But when given the opportunity to go with McCumbie McAleer racing, he felt he couldn't turn it down. He had the turn uh, He had some money, sorry, from last year's championship, not the 250 grand, but that would make a huge difference this year if he can win the championship. He finished third last year, so that was still north of 55 grand that he yeah, walked away 60, with. 60, I think, yeah, you're right. Plus, plus 6,000. For, for race wins all the way down to a thousand for tenth. Oh uh, yeah, six through tenth gets grand each yep. position. So yes, it it didn't hurt his pocketbook to run in his championship last year, not win the championship. He still was fiscally rewarded with real cash money. Discord group going wild. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you for your support to our hardcore endurance racing fans. I know this is only 45 minutes, but it plays so very well with the Arwek Discord group and many of you watching and listening around the world. This is a big event live from Sebring. I suspect productivity, well, it's after the end of the workday in Europe, so productivity possibly hasn't been affected so much. There's still potential for tomorrow. Have faith. Nathan Nicholson, by the way, has continued this charge up through the field. He just set the overall fastest sector oh, well, one yeah. and is now not only within reach of Jonathan Neudorf, Julian DaCosta, but also Noah Harmon. So all of a sudden, Nathan Nicholson is looking at being within the top 10 and getting money for his result here today. Yeah, and also uh, let's not forget that uh, Julian DaCosta, who is a about, well, he's not even a second ahead. He's the next rookie. He's the next rookie that he could have a go at as well. Noah Harmon is a little bit further up the field, but there's an opportunity to get possibly on the rookie podium here. Fastest lap of the race. Reset, 10 points at the moment to Jeremy <laughs> Fletcher down in eighth position. So he's realized now what's going on ahead of him. It might be too late, Shay, because that little group of three that's uh, headed by Gresham Wagner, has got away from Western Workman and from Jeremy Fletcher. No, they've brought it back together. So it's a pair that's out, fr out front there. Fourth and fifth, Gresham Wagner, Jared Thomas, Aaron Johnson can't live with them or made a little mistake. So they now have to work together at the lead. Now, here's the first pass for position down at turn seven. So what's that gap come down to? Was nearly six, came down to mid fives. Then 5.1, 4.7. Now three and a half seconds between the podium trio provisionally and the chasing group, Gresham Wagner and Jared Thomas. This is a different kind of exciting that we're normally seeing in Mazda. The Wheel of Mazda MX-5 Cup side-by-side -side racing is its stock in trade. This has been far more strategic, far more, in some ways, collegiate by the, the, the groups of cars, and we have got five cars back again for that second group from fourth on down. And at the back of that, the number 24 of Aaron Johnson. This is almost like competitive fishing, but they've got the fish on the reel. And the question is, can they bring it into the boat before yeah. time expires? Yeah, totally agree. Not that I've ever watched competitive fishing. No, you knew far too much about that, Shay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the secret is out. Uh, shoot. All right. Shay Bassport Adam is what we're going to be calling <laughs> him from now on. Down oh. towards turn 17. Gonzalez flicks out to the right, then flicks immediately back in again. Shows the nose of his car. This is, I don't think this is a pass for position here. 
There is pitch to car radio here. So the leading three, they can't talk to each other, but their team will be telling them that Gresham Wagner and Jared Thomas and Aaron Johnson and Weston Workman and Jeremy Fletcher are coming. Ten minutes. Oh, my goodness. It's almost like a handicap race, actually, because, the, you know, if we dialed this in at the beginning, we couldn't have done any better. And what's going to happen when somebody... Let's use a, a motorcycle term here because it's often been described that Willem Mazda MX-5 Cup is a bit like Moto3 racing. Well, who's going to pull the pin first on, on these top three? Because the moment they start fighting, that three seconds is going to disappear. We are below three seconds now, 2.993 seconds. There you go. So down from, uh, what was it, 3.7. Well, it was that six last to start lap. with, and yeah. it's come down every lap, sometimes just by a tenth, but getting on towards two or three tenths a lap now. That is sheer willpower on behalf of Gresham Wagner and Jared Thomas, the two former series champions, to be saying, we want in, we want in yeah. to try and catch up to this battle. And, and let's not forget two different teams there. Gresham Wagner trying to close down his teammate. What's interesting here is there are three different teams in the top three. So we, I haven't made that point before. I've said these guys are working together and they are, but they're not teammates. But even teammates here are teammates only until it comes to the dash for the flag. <laughs> because there's, you know, it's not like Formula One or IMSA um, where you are working with your team. You are all under the same awning and you might be sharing data and you'll want to try and make a break with your teammates. But when it comes down to the championship, it is every driver for themselves. And everyone understands that. Yeah, it's fair game. And and part of the reason that you have a driver like Gresham Wagner come in to join McCombie McAleer Racing for this year, get lured back into the championship for the possibility of working with them, is because MMR, with a team championship, yes, that they're going for, but more so the drivers that they have in their crew. Four drivers, John Jodemont, Connors, uh, excuse me, Nate Cicero, uh, Jeremy Fletcher, and Gresham Wagner, any one of those four drivers can win the championship. Gresham knows that. That's why he joined, because he's working with people who are his equals. And Gresham, for a little while, ran as a solo car. He knows what it's like to be out there by himself. He also knows what it's like to be part of a great team. That's how he won the championship. Uh, and by the way, earlier on, and please put me in the corner with the Dunces hat on, uh, I said the 787B was a three-rotor. It was a four-rotor, naturally aspirated engine that beautiful Nigel Stroud penned car. Gonzalez back to the lead going through turn one made it up the inside of Connor Zilich but Connor Zilich with the full head of steam looks down the inside decides to stay behind through turn three. This is too early for that kind of fighting they are going to get caught straight away how I could ever forget it was four rotor it kept me awake plenty of times that car at Le Mans seven and three quarters of a minute to go and the peloton, to go back to that analogy we set earlier on, this is like being inside the last five kilometers of a major stage race or a Grand Tour stage. It's two and a half seconds. And this must be fabulous for Gresham Wagner and Jared Thomas and Weston Workman will have learned so much in this last few laps that he's not had to do any overtaking because that's not what it's about. He's just been sitting with some of the series best and following their lines and watching how they carry speed through the corners. And this is coming down very quickly now, very quickly indeed. It's down to 1.7 seconds. And we are going to have a last four or five minutes that has six or seven cars in the battle. Celine Roland has just dropped off the back, but he's not too far away. And once they get together, it's going to start to fight. So normally we have all the fighting, all the fighting, all the fighting. And then maybe for the last few laps, we get three breaking away. We've had three bro broken away early on. Big slide by Gonzalez. Has he put too much energy through his Michelin tyres? The front end was away from him now. He's coming through turn 15. Extraordinary save by the young man. But it's costing them time now. And we're going to have another blanket finish here. Get your stopwatches out because this is going to be tight. We, we'll be looking at photo finishes here again. I'm absolutely certain it's been a bold strategy from these three. 
And now I think they have to accept, Shay, that they are going to be caught. They I do. I think they have to, act, and they've got to start thinking about saving some performance and where they want to be in the next six minutes' time. Well, and it's almost like in this race, everybody's been using sock and boppers to hit each other because they haven't even been jabbing. They've been very, very lightly touching each other. Those have just come off. Those have been thrown to the floor, deflated. They're gone. And now it is going to be full-fledged punches as hard as they can muster because when you win at Sebring, it means something more. Yeah. Doesn't matter support race, doesn't matter class win. This is a track where you have to earn a victory. And no matter who takes it today, they will have done just that. It's been a bold strategy by the guys out front, but you've got to give credit to Gresham Wagner and Jared Thomas, principally for fighting their way through the carnage that was going on behind. And it, it wasn't organized. And they said, guys, we can't can't have done it was six seconds and change they were fighting for only the scraps and now they're within sight it's well under two seconds now they're within the draft they, and they that's going to make close that's going to make the big difference when they get to the back straight if they can stay this tight john it will mean that gresham wagner will be up on the bumper particularly by the time they go through turn one because two long straights and you mentioned it a big hole in the air that these cars punch with the roll cage and the open top it's going to be on I'm, I'm supremely impressed by the work that Gresham Wagner and Jared Thomas have done to get Agreed. back. However, let's not underestimate what Western Workmen in the third place in that second group in the BSI racing car, the most in purple, number 13. Let's not underestimate that rookie. Rookie. Yes, he's got MX5 experience before in Miata, but this is his first season in the big show. And my goodness, he could not have learned from any two better mentors there. One is teammate, of course. Uh, so, you know, he's BSI, isn't he? So he's in with two JTR cars. Yep. Uh, one, uh, two, a JTR, and a McCammy, McCammy Macarit, Leah, should I say it? And just while we're mentioning the rookies again, Nathan Nicholson is now the second best rookie in the field up no into way. the top 10. Chapeau, young man. So he's got past Julian De Costa, Jonathan Neudorf, and Noah Harmon since the last time we started talking. Now that looked a bit more, that looked more, a bit more decisive at the front of the field into turn 17. From Connor Zilich on Tyler Gonzalez to retake the lead. Can Tyler get a run coming to the line? This is going to be under a second at the line. It is. As they go through. Now, not the time. Well, Western Workman thinks it is the time. And he goes through and clips Jared Thomas. Bit of hip and thigh there. Bit of hip and shoulder from the rookie in the purple, number 13, just as they were working so well together to get back. Now, that's fractured that second group. Maybe another lap or two of being on their own for the leading three. That could be decisive for certainly fifth and sixth position, but Gresham Wagner is trying to get on terms. Sheer willpower, Gresham's gonna get up to them on his own. And when he does, that is the best news in the world for Nate Cicero, his teammate. What were we talking about with teammates working together? They will want to benefit each other more so than they will the cars ahead, but they're still gonna to want to win for themselves. Must have been a mistake from double series champion, Jared Thomas coming out at 17. I'm not underestimating the pace of that young Mr. Workman there, but Weston, had a really good run down the front straight. He analyzed the situation and thought it's goal time. And we have, can I say that we've got four for the lead? We've got three and a half for the lead. Let's call it four now. Let's call it four now through turn 10 on the far side of the circuit and Workman trying to get back on to make it a five car scrap with two to go. Time ticking down, under two minutes to go. So it will be white flag and three and three quarter miles to go. Now the gloves have to come off at the front of the field and Gresham Wagner might just hit the back of this leading three at the absolute right time when they start to fight. Nate Cicero is still holding on. Oh, great run through the Jean de Bianesses and down towards Le Mans at turn 17. But here comes the fourth place car, Gresham Wagner, the second of the McCumbie Magalia racing cars. He's two or three car lengths back. Personal best sector one for Gresham Wagner. Overall best sector two. Gresham is pushing with everything he has left in his number five machine. So from three cars to pick out from the podium, it's going to be almost four. It'll be white flag in the air this time around. Here come the leaders bouncing their way through turn number 17. 
Wagner may be not quite close enough this time, but he might be able to pick up the pieces when these three start to fight, as they surely will in the last three and three quarter miles of the first of two rounds of the Wheel and Mazda MX-5 Cup at Sebring International Raceway. Al Arena, who's the series photographer for this, you might want to get lined up exactly on the start finish line is. at the ground level because, Al, this is going to be the shot. He's got up on the uh, on the starter stand. There's somebody up there with a camera. Mm. So let's see if they get the shot. Is this going to be the side by side by side? Be oh, a mistake, a tiny mistake by Wagner through turns four into turn five. And it's just dropped him away. I was just about to see he's on the back of this three. It's Silic leading, but not by much. From Gonzalez, from Cicero, has got a new lease of life now. So Cicero, who was struggling in the middle part of this race. Was Cicero saving his tyres? Well, there you go, shit. And we'll, we'll only know when we've spoken to them. <laughs> Here oh. comes Wagner. Wagner's there now. So it is four. It's four for three steps on a box. Right, take a deep breath now, because this is going to get interesting. And that's where we leave the Mazda MX-5 Cup. Uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Yeah. We'll pick you up at Laguna Seca. Yeah, your, <laughs> your, uh, your results on a postcard, please, yeah. too. And they've all won. I think I've heard you say that here before. <laughs> they've all won it. I think we've all won Every being time. a part of this series. Absolutely right. Every time. Four, then, for three steps on the podium. What do you reckon, Shit? Where would you want to be at the moment if you were in one of these four cars? Gresham Wagner. Pick up the pieces of whatever's left as the top three go through turn 17 for the final time. And let's not forget, when we had that phenomenal Lightning McQueen-style finish back in 2021, Gresham Wagner was involved. Gresham Wagner finished oh, third. That? Gresham Wagner here could come from, remember, six seconds back from this. We don't see this happen. This is defensive driving now by Conor Zilic. He's pushed all the way over to the right, but not far enough. Here comes Gonzalez. But Wagner's swung all the way over to the left-hand side of the road. He'll dive to the inside of turn 17. Two by two here. Coming out of the final corner, Gonzalez has it for now. In second, it's Cicero. In third, it's Wagner-ish, I'm not sure. It's the dash to the line, the checkered flag is out. It's going to be Gonzalez that takes it. From in second, Conor Zilic. Wagner gets onto the podium in third and bumps down the unfortunate Nate Cicero. It's going to be Western Workman who leads the rest of the pack home ahead of twice champion Jared Thomas, Aaron Johnson in seventh, Celine Roland in eighth. Then in ninth position, Noah Harmon is the second of the rookies who got ahead of Nathan Nicholson in the dash to the line, but Nathan, take a bow, my friend, into the top 10, $1,000 for driving from the back of the field for JTR, who have three cars in the top 10. Exciting, yes. Gonzalez off the track on the slowing down lap, he's got something hanging underneath at the left front. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> well, you've got to say that Zilic did his best. He covered to the right-hand side, coming down to the final corner, but it wasn't right side far enough. As Gonzalez went through, looked like Nate Cicero had got the draft through. Gresham Wagner actually had to check up in the middle of turn 17. He had a really good run, but couldn't find the space. And as they came to the line, it was a positively huge gap between first and second of 0 0.079 of a second. Well, I'm not trying, lads. Really expected to see better than that. Tyler Gonzalez then takes the victory for Sato Motorsport Group ahead of BSI's uh, Conor Silic in second. Weird. What happened to uh, Jeremy Fletcher on that final lap? Our co-series points leader coming into today's race did not finish the race. He is off at turn 13 and behind the wall. Did not see the checkered flag. Oh, that is going to be huge. Unofficially, here's the result. Gonzalez finish. Wagner, Nate Cicero loses out of a what was looked early on like a nailed on. Nailed on podium finish. Western Workman is the best of the rookies from Jared Thomas, Aaron Johnson, Celine Roland, Noah Harmon, and Nathan Nicholson, who fights up 
his way to the top. And as we look at the rest of the results, Cher, here's the unofficial points. Gresham Wagner is our sole points leader after that one with 930. In second now is Tyler Gonzalez, today's race winner, on 910. In third, Celine Roland with 760. And a tie for fourth, Aaron Johnson and Weston Workman on 700. Well, we get our breath back as Tyler Gonzalez is touring back into the pit lane. Not your average Whelan MX-5 race. The opportunity was there for a three-car breakaway. They took it. They extended the lead over six seconds in that race. And it was left to the series veterans to organize the chase back by the rest of the pack. And led by Gresham Wagner, that is exactly what they did. Alex Matura going off and Preston Pardis as well. But at the end, four cars were battling for the finish. And Tyler Gonzalez takes the race victory here at Sebring.